I usually start serious speeches by saying I appreciate I'm the only thing between you and your dinner, but you've had your dinner, uh, so you're the only thing between me and my glass of wine. Um, so there is nothing as great as incentive. So I'm going to try very hard to go through quite a serious speech, which I think is a very serious message and certainly one that I hope will resonate with the people in this room more so um, than, uh, than anyone else. Um, I want to start um, with a fairly basic question. And it's a question that I have been asking myself and my colleagues um, for a long time. And that is, what is the purpose of stock markets? Um, now, if you Google the question, purpose of stock markets, this is what you get. Hopefully, there's somebody pressing a button somewhere, otherwise, this isn't going to work. Yes. So, Wikipedia says it allows businesses to raise capital. Finance, Zach says business needs, needs stock markets to raise capital. Investing lesson one, that's my particular favorite, actually. The stock market exists to provide capital. Uh, Investopedia says the stock market is one of the most vital components of a free market economy, and eHouse says the stock market allocates capital to publicly traded companies. It goes on, you can go on for pages. It takes about three pages before you get into trading. And generally, there's, very, there's consensus on the very activity that we are here to reward and celebrate tonight with the SMW Awards. The fundamental purpose of markets, the reason why exchanges exist, the customers that we serve, and most importantly, the most fundamental value add for the real economy. And as a CEO, of an exchange in a relatively small economy, which has had a few problems, you might have heard, with bank funding. I see the reality of that every single day. I see the reality and the struggles that companies, some very similar to the companies that are sitting in this room, have with funding every day. Okay, so we've worked, and you can't disagree with Wikipedia, so there's no doubt that's the fundamental purpose of stock markets. So you say, okay, well, surely that's the focus. If that's the purpose, that should be the focus. It should be the focus of European regulators. It should be the focus of legislators, politicians, to ensure that the capital formation engine, which is the fundamental purpose for which we all exist, uh, is the best that it can be. The focus of exchanges, surely, is to ensure that they deliver the best services, the best market access, best visibility. The focus of product makers is to deliver to that dynamic. And the focus of everyone in the community is to ensure that companies are educated in the IPO process, nurtured towards that, encouraged while they're on the market and benefiting from the market, understanding the challenges and the rewards of the market, surely. That's our focus as an economic block. Surely that's what Europe should be working on. Well, <clears throat> let's just take a pause. For the last 10 years, exchanges, regulators, brokers, banks, legislators have spent hours in darkened rooms talking about trading fees, data fees, latency, high frequency, co-location, dark pools, light pools, MIFID 1, OTFs, MTFs, MIFID, EMIR, I can go on. I would love to have a show of hands in this room, actually, from the companies only, as to how many of you consider those initiatives to be important to you. Now, this is going to be very embarrassing if I get a massive show of hands. <laughs> Nobody. Um, now, some of that is understandable and, you know, really necessary. The world has moved on. It's a globalized marketplace. Companies and investment have globalized. We have to follow suit. Um, I get it. You know, we can't put the genie back in the bottle. We can't go back where we were. And definitely the largest broker dealers, the largest banks have benefited from faster, cheaper, more globalized, more efficient trading infrastructure. And that's all for the good. And arguably the largest companies and the most liquid stocks have benefited also, although opinion does vary on that. However, there are a lot of others. Um, FESE produces great statistics, and I'd encourage anyone to look at them, um, but my absolute favorite statistic is that 90% of the trading in European listed companies happens in 10% of the companies. 
That's less than, ten, that's less than 1,000 companies. So we have spent a decade 100% focused on the market reality, reality of 10% of our listed companies and have basically ignored the impact and the reality of 90% of the market. In that time, as Christian said, the number of listed companies in European markets have dropped to an all-time low. 1,000 companies is, is, is shocking. The ecosystem that supports small to mid-sized enterprise brokers, banks, analysts, accounting firms, law firms, have all shrunk, and the incentive alignment that they had towards supporting companies of that side, size has disappeared completely. In Ireland alone, we started this decade with 12 brokerage firms. We now have three. So that's nine fewer firms advocating, pushing, encouraging, supporting companies coming to our market, or indeed any market. There's, during that time then, we have an ever-widening equity gap for enterprise funding. There are two competing forces in the funding markets. On the one side, you've got a hugely reduced availability of bank and mezzanine debt, and that's highly unlikely to change for some time to come and you have a lot more risk aversion within private equity and venture capital to a certain extent, but um, I'm aware of some of the people in the room, so I won't go into that. On the other side, we have an investor, um, on the other side, investor appetite and the regulatory and management cost of being a public company has massively increased the market capitalization in which it's feasible to go public. And the more rarefied the market be becomes, the greater that gap is. And then, when you succeed in coming to the market, like companies in this room, these companies find it very difficult to deal with the realities of distinguishing themselves in a crowded and globalized marketplace. Mid-cap companies are underbroked, they're underanalyzed, they're very geographically confined for investment, they're not widely spread enough to command significant institutional interest. They struggle to resource and deliver to the increasing demands and sophistication of investor relations, regulation, transparency, governance, the list goes on. They don't enjoy index participation, access to their international investor databases available to their larger peers, and they have been most adversely affected by the global investment trend towards passive investment. So you might say, why is this important? Because after all, you know, there are still companies but if we don't provide a credible, coordinated, European marketplace solution for companies, there's a very easy solution for their funding needs, and that is to sell. And the difficulty for Europe is that people with the checkbooks tend not to be European. They're either Asian or, or, or American. And certainly the experience in my country has been very much that. Every single one of our new economy companies are sold at a very early stage to mainly US and sometimes Asian investors. Now what does that mean? That means we lose the economic benefit, the economic multiplier of success. We lose the control of European intellectual property. We lose the skills. We lose the expertise, the innovative capabilities, the headquarters, the employment. But most importantly, we lose the leadership. We lose the normalization that other companies that come 20 years from now see in the peers that are ahead of them that have succeeded in the marketplace, have remained in Europe, and have, have con continued to consolidate the vast majority of their economic interests in this economic block. block. Small and medium-sized enterprise represent 67% of the employment in Europe, and yet we're not focused on them. So what do we do? I'd, I'd love to say that exchanges have all the answers, uh, but we don't. We are doing more um, by putting listed companies where they rightly belong, right in the middle of our customer relationships and acknowledging in our strategies and our policies that without listings, without the guys in this room, we have no business. We hopefully are delivering more to their trading needs and we're providing more supports um, in investor relations and market education, but that it takes more than this to create a market. And to my mind, there is a market failure. 
And there are things, and I'm delighted to hear the Commissioner earlier say that there are things that that Europe can do if they are motivated to do it. First of all, to my mind, European policymakers have to accept that SMEs are effectively a different asset class. And for too long, they've been retrofitted into regulations and policies that are fundamentally ill-suited for their needs. They are designed for blue chips. Blue chips are a different animal completely on markets. Too often SMEs have, the, have been the afterthought rather than the front of mind. And we need a different approach and with a nuanced approach to regulation going forward. There has to be a clearly articulated European vision and strategy on how we can retain, encourage and scale European enterprise and keep them in Europe. How do we ensure that we can identify these companies and nurture them? The good news is, I'm getting less serious now, um, that Europe has finally started to treat, to, to take this seriously. Um, there have been numerous reports recently, there's been a lot of discussion, we had a wonderful discussion today, and there's been a lot of political reference about the importance of capital formation, and in particular, the importance of markets for SME growth. I've been involved in the IPO task force, and I see some, many members of that, of that group here today. And that has, that has been a terrific initiative at European level, to do, and it's going to be delivering a report very soon. It's certainly, the conversation and that report will certainly confirm the reality of the problem, but also the complexity of the solutions. And the solution, there's a myriad of different things that we have to do. How can we solve the development capital needs of these companies? How can we coordinate institutional support? Um, if they're on the market, how do we deliver better coordination, better brokerage, better analysis, better investor networks, showcase these companies across Europe? How can we ensure comparability of a, of a mid-cap Italian tech company with an Irish tech company? Um, can we support them better in IR, in management skills? Can we support them as they go through that crucial time in their life on the market from being entrepreneur-led to management-led? Can we give them more education on market expectations and communication? Can we deliver indices, better relevance and credibility to the passive investment dynamic? Most importantly, and I, I, I do think that you need to look at the humanity of companies? Can we give positive incentives to our entrepreneurs to scale their business, to take, to throw it, to, to, to go on the roulette table a second time, allow them to de-risk their lives, bring their company to the next level, rather than sell out and take that check? It is really good to see that Europe is finally acknowledging and grappling with these problems. Unfortunately, my fear is that the technical and political difficulties of the solutions will put our legislators off. So I appeal to everyone in this room to keep the pressure on. The prize is really clear. The economic multiplier of enterprise scale is huge. The employment that it creates is huge. And the leadership that, it's, that it develops to sustain the next generation of companies is obvious. Meanwhile, while we've been having this existential crisis and looking back on the last 10 years and going, what the hell was that all about? The people in this room have been getting on with the real world of running, building, expanding, and funding a company during one of the greatest recessions we've experienced in our lifetime. I salute you all. You have achieved something truly exceptional in exceptional circumstances. And you are all winners and as such are a hugely important part now of the stock market community. I hope you will spread this message and we all as a community need to get back to this, the real purpose of stock markets, which is you. Congratulations.